Hey artists! Welcome back to a new school year and a colorful start in visual arts. Today we'll begin our journey in creating color theory mandalas, a beginner favorite that incorporates simple geometry, color theory, and practice in acrylic paint. Let's get inspired. As some of you may remember from our ephemeral works in nature, the name mandala comes from the Sanskrit word for circle and refers to the sense of wholeness. In Buddhism, mandalas represent the ideal form of the universe. Many are familiar with the incredible ritual in creating sand mandalas, noting the impermanence of the mandala despite the dedication and work in establishing such a piece. We'll also notice that the mandala can be found within other contexts, such as the Christian rose window constructed in stained glass. Today, mandalas hold root in providing a visual for a meditative and relaxing pattern. This typically begins with a single asymmetrical design. However, we invite new adaptations. Artist Kristen Farr's work provides a new take on the mandala with her exciting colors, strong lines, and impressive scale. So now that we have a bit of context, let's begin with our personal mandalas. All artists will start with the same basic structure, a circle and cross sections on paper. If you are one of my visual arts students, this has already been prepped for you and can be found in your supply kit. For this next step, you'll need to have the protractor found in your supply kit, a pencil and a ruler ready. I am working to place my protractor's central vertical line over the center of the circle and my protractor's bottom horizontal line with one of the X's lines. Once I have my protractor positioned correctly, I will start to make a mark above every 30 degrees on one side of the circle. That's at 30 degrees, 60, 90, 120, and 150. When finished, do the same on the other half of the circle. Finally, use your ruler to connect the marks from one side to the other, ending your line at the circle's outline. Let's move forward to creating our foundational design slice, which will be used in establishing your final mandala. First, we will use newsprint, located in your supply kit, to trace the outline of one of your slices. Depending on the day, you may need to use a window for light to effectively trace. Next, use shapes, not lines, to create your foundational design. A few tips for creating a successful design include avoiding lines and small designs that will be difficult or impossible to paint around later. Avoid a symmetrical design as it leads to a static, or unchanging, not very interesting, final mandala. Use a bubble style if you'd like to include letters in your design. Once you've created your foundational design slice, it's time to rotate and reflect your original design onto the remaining slices of your mandala structure. By simply tracing your design on the back and then retracing the front with pencil, You'll leave a light graphite design on your paper accurately. Although you can use a mechanical pencil if you have a very light touch, it's mostly easier to use the provided softer graphite pencil so that you avoid tears in your newsprint. Please make certain that you are carefully alternating rotations and reflections. It will be helpful to label the front and the back design with A and B, so you don't end up needing to make corrections later. Continue with your reflections and rotations until you have completed your final mandala design. Take a few moments to clean up any rough edges and carefully finish any designs that didn't quite make it to the end of the slices. Add an A and B to the outside of each slice if you have not already done so. This will come in handy later. Congrats, you've finished your mandala design.
Our mandalas provide a fantastic opportunity for expanding our use of color. We've incorporated color basics in many of our past activities. For example, the sixth grade art majors completed the color wheel scavenger hunt. This activity helped identify the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. We all worked with analogous colors, tints, and shades while creating our value scales and spheres. Our chosen analogous colors, which live side by side on the color wheel, helped us establish the rich dimensional value, while tints allowed us to create the softer values with the addition of white. For this project, we will add to our color theory knowledge and incorporate the use of complementary colors. Okay, so let's take some time to break down and explore our color theory options together, starting with our A slices. Please know that we're going to ultimately choose five colors to set the tone for our mandalas. Those five colors are going to include a set of four analogous colors plus one complementary color. Okay, um, your analogous colors are going to help create a harmonious base to your work, while the addition of one complement will provide emphasis to your design and help viewers' eyes travel around your piece. Um, but really, it's so helpful to visualize possible color stories on our project before making final decisions. So you'll see here that I'm using a 12-step color wheel with some tints as a reference. And I'm going to take some time to explore and play with these color options and really notice my preferences for them. You at home can use your tablets, you can use Photoshop, or you can simply use colored pencils in your sketchbook to do so, okay? So here I am and I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to start working with my four analogous colors, right? My set. And perhaps I'm going to work with this beautiful yellow. Yep, that's lovely. And notice for A, I'm choosing the hue as opposed to touching any tints. There's a reason for that, okay, friends? Next to it is yellow orange. Next to it is orange. Okay. And then I'm going to choose one more. I'm going to choose this red orange. Okay. So this is a set of four analogous colors, and you'll notice that they all kind of live in this warm spectrum of the color wheel. They're all kind of over here on one side. So these are really nice, really distinct, harmonious or analogous colors. And then in addition to this set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a complementary color that's opposite the color wheel of one of these. And because I'm kind of thinking that this beautiful yellow orange might be the base or the majority of my piece, just something to really create a wonderful, wonderful tone, I'm going to look across from that. I'm going to select this really vibrant blue. Okay, and it would be totally fine if instead of that blue, I wanted to choose a lighter, more distinct. Yeah, for some reason, I'm really liking that color too, okay? So this is just an example of one of those sets that you could use, okay? Um, now, for your B slice, and again, you guys at this point already have that labeled on your mandala. What you're doing is you're identifying those same colors. So for instance, there's that yellow that I used for A and we're creating tints of it. So a tint is a color plus white. So for my B slices, wherever I had yellow on A, I would have a tint of yellow on B. And I'm looking to create tints when I'm working with my acrylics eventually that are going to be consistently lighter. So I really like this example. I think it's cool because it is such a distinct and um, sharp contrast between my warm analogous colors and this bright and very, very um, bold complement, okay? However, if I were to just stick with this one, I think I'm kind of limiting myself. We are middle school artists, and this is a great time to explore and have fun and really make sure that we're happy with our choices. So I'm going to show you another example of what I can do. So how about I come down here, and I'm going to work with some different analogous colors that are going to incorporate 
hues from both the warm and cool color spectrum. Okay, so let's start with that same blue. And again, this is just another option for me. Okay, so there's four analogous colors. They live side by side on the color wheel, but they incorporate some warm colors too, even though for the most part, we categorize them with cool colors here. And then I'm gonna choose one complementary color, so across the way. How about I do something interesting, like take that color. And then for my B slices, I would just, again, be looking for the tints of those colors. So this one would become this. All right, so I can step back. At this point, you can keep going. You can try out lots of different color relationships and families while still working within that structure, right? We're looking for four analogous colors plus a complement of one of those analogous colors that you've utilized. And you're really starting to think about, A, um, is this gonna be difficult to actually establish in acrylics? Have I chosen some kind of funky color that I'm gonna mix? Especially if we look at secondaries and tertiary colors, they might not come directly out of the bottle, you might have to create your own custom colors and then are my tints going to be easily established so please think about that please also think about your preferences what colors are you really drawn to what colors seem to kind of fit the mandala design that you just work so hard to rotate and translate it's now time to prepare and paint with acrylics in your supply kits i've provided a palette basic paint hues, and brushes for you. Depending on your color story, you may realize that you need to mix some of your colors, and that's okay. We want to keep in mind that it's best to work with just one color and one tint at a time. Once you have your first pair of color and tint mixed, decide what shape or shapes in each slice to paint. Remembering to alternate your colors and tints according to A and B slices. Please use your detail brushes provided in supply kit to help you paint around your edges and the smaller shapes neatly. If you are working with lighter paint colors, such as yellow, Please be patient and understand that your shapes will probably need a second coat. When finished and proud of your results, continue working with a pair of one color and one tint at a time. Have fun watching your mandala come to life. If needed, clean out part of your palette as you progress. I've saved my complementary color, blue, for last to paint some of my more interesting shapes. Here it is my finished color theory mandala. I cannot wait to see all of your fantastic and fun works of art. Stay safe, stay creative, see you soon.